Hey chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I have a very interesting and spectacular chess match between AlphaZero and me, AlphaZero is the best chess engine in the world, developed by Google in 2018, although AlphaZero has been dismantled, the version I played against is well preserved, this AlphaZero is a 2023 version, and we played an amazing and incredible game of chess, I will illustrate the chess tactics and strategies that we employed in the game, so. Let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with d4, alpha 0 played d5, and we have c4, here, alpha 0 can go with bishop f5, knight f6 or some other casual looking moves, but instead of all these moves, it decided to accept my queen's gambit, therefore, I played e4 and after knight c6 and knight f3, we have bishop g4, putting pressure on the knight and the d4 pawn, alpha 0 is doing well, so I pushed my pawn, and we have knight e5 to increase the pressure, instead of moving the bishop. I played a very strange looking move, bishop to f4, many chess players might wonder why I placed my bishop here because the knight can easily capture it, and after that, my pawns will be doubled up on the f-file, but that is only half the truth. In every circumstance and bad situation, there is a good aspect to brighten the future, also, my pawns create a very adventurous position that dominates these squares, which is why, as the bishop moves back, we have bishop takes c4, gaining access to this diagonal, you can see that all your pawns are becoming very weak, and just dominated by my pawns, your position is just cramped because after the knight moves and c6 is considered by black, I will consider rook to g1. The best move for black is to consider knight to d7 or g5, believe it or not, these are the best moves, but if you dare to capture the pawn on d5, which seems logical, it is a completely vulnerable move because I can play bishop to b5 check, as the knight moves, rook to g5 will arrive to attack these pieces, and rook takes d5 will generate overwhelming pressure on the knight, allowing me to crush your position and king's side. But don't worry when stockfish is here, let me provide you an incredible quote. Calmness is a human superpower, the ability to not overreact or take things personally keeps your mind clear and your heart at peace. So, going back to the position, we discovered that capturing the knight is a very bad strategy, that's why we have knight to g6 attacking the bishop, and as the bishop moves, we have e5, bishop takes c4, and h3 on the board to kick out the bishop, the knight didn't capture by alpha 0, it just moved back its bishop, instead of playing knight c3 or castling, I played another very strange looking move, can you guess what I played? If you guessed e6, then congratulations, that's the best move I considered in the game. And it is completely challenging and very difficult to find, at this point, if many players were playing with the black pieces, they might think of c takes d6, but it is a completely rubbish move because my queen can bring herself out to b3, putting pressure on these two pawns, after queen to e7, I can develop my knight to the c3 square with the idea of knight to d5, and as the bishop moves, I can still consider knight to d5, putting pressure on your queen, therefore. After capturing and bishop takes d5 on the board, putting pressure on the b7 pawn, the rook comes in, and knight to g5 will arrive to put more pressure on the f7 pawn, playing knight h6 doesn't matter because I can simply play g3, castle, and this position gives me almost a 5 point advantage like I am up a rook, your pieces, along with the king, are very vulnerable and awkward. Going back to the position, as d6 appears on the board and you cannot capture it with your weak pawn, many players might think of capturing the pawn with the bishop, that's what actually happened in the game, when I played d6, I also created free space for my queen on d5, putting pressure on the pawn, so, as the queen moves, we have queen takes b7, rook moves and queen to b3 again, putting pressure on the pawn diagonally, as the knight moves, we have queen to c2 to protect the pawn, a couple of moves later. You can see that the knight goes to h5, happening in the game where alpha 0 wants to consider f5 to open up the rook file, like in its 2018 version, and also knight to f4 can come, with the overpowering knights creating potential harm to my structure the bishop's diagonal is wide open, and queen to g5 can also arrive on the board, 
After I captured the pawn and knight f4 happened on the board, attacking my structure, I decided to exchange the pieces. <laughs> and here another knight is doing the same thing as its predecessor, as the knight moves to the e2 square, alpha 0 considered a very brilliant move, can you guess that move? I'm giving you another chance to think about it, try to think a little bit, yes, if you guessed knight takes h3, then congratulations, you are correct, that is the best move that alpha 0 actually considered in the game, this opens up the g file completely, therefore, after the queen goes to the f6 square, putting pressure on the knight, playing queen d3 would not bring any advantage to me, therefore, I need to just move back my knight, and bishop to e7 will arrive, that's what actually happened in our game. Bishop takes h3 can arrive, the rook file can get there, and queen g5 check can ruin my position, bishop takes h3 actually happened in the game. Attacking the rook, many players might think of considering rook to e1, but it is a completely vulnerable move, let me show you why, alpha 0 can simply consider h5, threatening to play h4 to dominate the g3 square where the knight on g3 cannot arrive, therefore, the queen and bishop can siege my position and dominate it, queen to g5 check can also arrive, the position is not good for me because the king will be under severe pressure. So, going back to the position, I didn't save the rook as it would undevelop my pieces, and I would need many moves to compensate for my position, that's why I just considered knight to g3. So, after the exchanges occur, we have a few more moves, later, the knight and queen are attacking the pawn, and the bishop arrives, you can see that we are just making 4000 elo rated moves, I don't want to explain all these moves because it's about to transition into the end game, and my pawn is advancing to the a6 square, the rook moves to g5, played by alpha 0, I didn't capture the rook because, after queen takes knight, another rook can move to the f6 square to dominate my king's side. That's why I just moved my king back. After a few more moves, we had some pawn exchanges, and f3 appeared on the board, you can see that we are just maneuvering pieces, like in a chess coffee bar, we exchanged queens, and at the end of the day, I had two connected pawns, which is completely winning for me, in this position, it's completely winning for me, as I mentioned, I captured his rook, and at the end of the game, I had three pieces, slowly but surely, I developed my pieces, and finally I checkmated him, I hope you enjoyed the game very much. If you enjoyed the Alpha Zero content, then do subscribe and comment on my video that you want more, until then, bye bye, see you soon.